Recording. Okay, great. I'll put it on pause. <coughs> meeting going. Yeah, yeah. Approve those minutes. I move that we approve those minutes. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, next is public comment. Any comments from the public? Marina, I had a quick announcement. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, Go ahead. That, uh, <laughs> and why I'm doing this and not Gordon. <laughs> First selectman uh, Gordon is sick. Um, he's isolating at home today, this morning, he got a COVID test um, and he's awaiting results. Um, it could, his doctors have told him it could be, a, you know, some un-COVID related illness, like a, a, you know, including a tick-borne illness or something. So, but until then he's going to be isolating and the first selectman reminds everyone to to wear a mask and use hand sanitizer and social distance <clears throat> as local covid cases are escalating thanks um yeah and i would like to just wish him a speedy recovery whatever he is um facing whether it be covid or something else um so we wish him well um, okay, so on to public comment. Caroline. Hi. Hi. Hi, Marina. Hi, Jonathan. Hi, Priscilla. Hi, everyone. Um, I noticed on the agenda tonight that you're going to be considering giving publicity funding to the Cornwall Internet Expansion Committee, the private group that's promoting the construction of a municipal fiber optic network in Cornwall. And so this municipal fiber optic network if it were to be built, would affect every resident in Cornwall because taxes would need to be raised to cover the millions of dollars that it would cost to build the network. <clears throat> and then in addition to that, there would be a fee uh, where everyone would have to pay to access the internet for those fiber optic lines, which would be higher than what we're, uh, it's estimated that it will be higher than what we're paying now. And then on top of that, each uh, residence in town would have to pay a fee to connect their home to the fiber optic network. And that fee is estimated to be at the least $1,500 and that it increases substantially depending on your distance from the network. So that could be in the range of 20 to $30,000 depending how, on how far you are. So I think that um, before you can see that there are a lot of issues pertaining to this. And I think that before any, the town promotes this in any way, that residents should be given the opportunity to be made aware of this information or to receive this information before they, for example, complete a survey or before the town promotes it in any way. And I've been gathering a lot of information and would love to present that to you. I think it also, for you, Marina and Priscilla, who are here, I think it affects your, would affect your decision to give funding because as kind of stewards of the town, um, what I've learned is that there's a great probability of this network failing uh, and financially and endangering Cornwall's financial security, uh, not the least of which is the fact that we would be competing with our cable providers for this who are one of whom is already beta testing fiber optic in our area. So I'd, so I would, I'd like to propose that we have a BOS meeting, a public forum at the BOS meeting or whatever way you do it where people can ask questions and where town residents can come and hear more about this. There, there was a person who appeared before you who is our advocate in the region. He's the cable TV advisory council chair of Litchfield. And he's also coincidentally a former network engineer with, with a lot of information that I think he could provide. So it would be great to invite him. I think just to finish it off, I think that the picture that you've been receiving thus far about this from various entities, including Northwest Connect and the Northwest Hills Council of Government is a lot rosier than what I've been learning from the many people that I've been speaking to, which are technologists who are CEOs of, of companies, one of whom even advised Google Fiber on its municipal fiber network, which has since been shuttered due to extreme financial losses. So I think just to benefit everyone in town and also you in particular, as you allocate this funding, I would 
urge you not to allocate these funds prematurely uh, for such a risky venture without first having all these facts before you and giving town residents an opportunity to hear these facts as well. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yo, Johan Windsor. Hello. I, I'm part of the uh, Cornwall Internet Committee, and I would say uh, I would like the Cornwall Internet Committee to have an opportunity to present uh, its proposal, which is months out before we are being charged with things that have not at all been established yet. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, um, so moving on to communications. Are there any communications to the board? Nope. Okay, so next moving on to additions to the agenda. I have three. Um, I would like to discuss the town hall players virtual um, benefit, the town report and the town meeting. Um, Marina, I'm yeah. sorry. Up. I'm going to have to leave on a call and I wanted to give a quick update on the COVID. Oh, okay. Yeah, we can switch that around. You can go ahead. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. So now we're moving on to the first agenda item of um, the meeting. So that's the COVID-19 update. Okay. Um, so overall in Connecticut, we're at a 5.4% positivity rate. Hospitalizations are up by 98 people over the last three days. We've had additional 22 deaths over the last three days. Locally, and I want to stress this, from March until September, which was six months, there were seven cases in Cornwall. In the last four weeks, we have added six cases. So just in four weeks, we've added six cases in Cornwall, uh, possibly more. What was uh, originally regional in, in listening to the governor uh, in his presentation, it's now much more widespread. Uh, Connecticut still has capacity compared to other states. But we want to be absolutely clear. He met with the uh, task force uh, with uh, Vice President Pence, and they wanted to stress absolutely no ambiguity. Wear your mask. Um, he feels in Connecticut retail can continue to stay open as long as we can keep a safe distance, limit the number of people, and are able to um, uh, you know, make sure that everybody is still wearing their masks. From a school perspective, there was one student at uh, Housatonic Valley High School that did test positive. They've been doing contact tracing. Other individuals that have been in contact with them are um, negative, so that's good. And obviously, Thanksgiving remains a big concern uh, with everybody coming home. And I'm sorry I have to leave on a call. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, Diane. Um, that's much appreciated. Thank All right, you. thank you. Um, I guess to stress Diane's point, I think that um, from our perspective, it's really crucial to be careful going into the holiday season. I think we're all tired and we all want to see people, but I think this is the time to kind of zip it back up and really take the precautions into place. I mean, I don't think Gordon would mind me talking about this, but you know, he is probably one of the safer or safest uh, people regarding COVID that I've encountered. And you know, if he potentially has it, which he, it's not confirmed, I mean, I think that speaks um, a lot to how um, easy it is to get this. Um, so moving on to additions to the agenda, like I said, I have three town hall players, virtual event, the town report and the town meeting. Are there any other additions to the agenda? Um, can I have a motion to add these to the agenda? I move we add those to the agenda. I second, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we've done COVID-19. Um, now we're gonna go to the request for funding um, from the Cornwall Internet Committee. And I know Gary, you wanted to speak about the wording on our agenda. Um, we had worded as publicity funding, but I, I will let you clarify what you feel like you need to clarify. So um, I will give the floor to you. Great, uh, Marina, Priscilla, and in absentia, Gordon, thank you. Um, the background of the Cornwall Internet Committee is um, a desire about having um, high-speed internet available to every residence and every business um, in Cornwall. It is no longer a nice-to-have. It is a necessity for telemedicine, schooling, 
uh, commerce, communications. Um, we're certainly more and more aware that uh, a reliable network is a necessity and it is a requirement that is needed to bring young families and businesses to Cornwall um, and all small towns across America without this high-speed internet um, system network will fall further and further behind the economic viability. Um, our internet providers, Optimum and Frontier, have for many years said that they will be bringing a fiber optic network to our town and to our region, but to this day, there is no concrete plan. So the 12 Cornwallians, all volunteers, came together last spring to put together a backup, a fallback plan that if Optimum and Frontier do not come forward with a plan, we have something to present to the town of Cornwall to consider for installing a fiber optic network um, in our town. The furthest along of all of the Northwest communities is um, Norfolk. They are going to vote on their town plan next spring. Um, while our committee is working towards this, and the survey is the first step, and Johan will speak more about that, um, our committee is also working on ways to help uh, Cornwallians maximize the use of their current system, um, a funding opportunity to help families who cannot afford internet service. So we are reaching out more than just the fiber optic network. One thought that had come up um, was to include cell service in our uh, focus. Um, our committee has consistently decided to not pursue that. Um, the players, the market are different than the fiber optic world. The regulatory environment is different. And while we are certain that we are all, um, as other towns have found, um, dissatisfied and disappointed with cell service, um, that is not a mandate we feel we should be taking up. That is a, a thoroughly different point. Um, to our committee, an important starting point is a survey. Um, and one of the key focal points of the survey is to identify where the gaps are in coverage throughout Cornwall so that we can address them as we go forward. Um, the survey itself is going to go out to every business and every residence um, to find out what their current and anticipated usage is and will be. That's the basic idea. Um, from the survey, we will garner information which will lead to the longer term planning for a fiber optic network. And to uh, reflect on our committee, we are 12 Cornwallians from the worlds of medicine, uh, technology. There are um, members on our committee who are very steeped in this technology, um, financial um, executives. So we have a broad range of dedicated Cornwallians and we encourage anyone to submit to us in writing with documentation and factual foundation, their thoughts, their suggestions, um, and the committee is the place for that forum to happen, um, not, in my opinion, the BOS. So with that, I'll turn it over to Johan, who can speak more about our funding request to the BOS for this survey. Johan? Johan, you're muted. Ah, sorry about that. Um, and thank you, Gary. I thought you covered that very well. In short, we essentially have a 15 question survey. We're trying to keep it simple. We're trying to keep it specifically focused on Cornwall, again, to identify the gaps, the shortfalls. I think many of us have heard that the, there are some uh, residences and business in town that have no internet service and uh, many residents and business that have very poor internet service. So we were specifically looking to uh, identify where those gaps are, what those addresses are, and then to take a look at what might be done to bring fiber to Cornwall and what the associated costs would be. For this survey, we're hoping to get it out in January. It's written. We're uh, basically looking to get the endorsement from uh, the Board of Selectmen. Uh, there is some cost associated with the survey. 
Two specifically, uh, we're looking for $500 for an insert in the Cornwall Chronicle so that we can include the survey there as one way to reach people. Another way, we will post it online. And then the third way to reach people with the survey is we would like to do a mailing. And we've estimated that cost at about $700 to do a town-wide mailing of the survey. Um, that's a total of $1,200 that we're looking for from uh, the Board of Selectmen in the town of Cornwall. Uh, the survey results we hope to publish uh, by early March, compile them, publish them, and make it available to the entire town to see where we stand and what next steps we might take to move forward or not. Okay, thank you very much. Um... I think there are a couple of things to discuss. Um, Priscilla, I'd love to get your thoughts on this. Um, in terms of the cell coverage, um, Gordon had brought up um, perhaps having a question at the end about cell coverage. And I actually quite agree with him because I think if you're doing this survey, I know that you are not gonna use that, that particular uh, data for your own usage, but if the town supports this survey in some way, and we would like to get that information. I don't see how that is an issue um, from the committee standpoint. Um, uh, I, I think it would be easy to add a question and we'll deal with the, the data. But if we're gonna put out this survey, I feel like, you know, why not kill two birds with one stone? And I understand it has nothing to do with what you necessarily wanna do, but I think that that would just be an easy way to collect that information. Um, because I do think that's also an issue that needs to be uh, somehow looked at, um, whether it's, you know, with your committee in, a, in another form or in a totally different committee or the Board of Slackmen. Um, and then the second point, too, is if um, you do receive public funds, then your meetings should probably be open to the public. Um, Priscilla, what are your thoughts? Two thoughts. Uh, one, and Gordon knows this because I did it about three years ago in my first term as a selectman, I drove every road in Cornwall with my cell phone to find out where I could get reception. And basically it was about 25% of the town. I did it last spring. Simon Hewitt asked me to do it with him and it took us two days. I, I will gotta tell you, this takes hours. And uh, I'm, I'm not talking about long driveways. I'm talking about state and town roads. And in the spring, it was much better, but it still was nowhere near half. It was maybe 40%. And that doesn't do well. Uh, I think it's one of the most important issues facing our town. And I think that we should find some monies to support at least the Chronicle insert um, to get started. Um, I, I think that uh, that is probably the easiest, best way to do an outreach to everyone in Cornwall uh, and, the, and the most inexpensive way to reach. So that's my two cents for. Thank you. Um, yeah, so oh. a lot of it is, um, I, I tend to agree that I think um, it's a bit redundant to do the Chronicle and a mailing, um, in, at least in the beginning of stages. If you don't get a good response with the Chronicle and with the internet, then we can look at a mailing. Um, and I don't know if this is something you guys wanna discuss internally before we vote on anything tonight. Um, but those are sort of our ideas and thoughts about moving forward and funding this survey. A um, couple thoughts. For our committee, the information about cell service um, will likely not be of great use. Uh, but if it is something the town wants and there's no harm in gathering it um, and it's important to you, absolutely. You know, okay. We can even make up the question too. I mean, you don't have to do the work if you don't, you know. No, no, well, we, actually we, we, have can, we can write the question okay. and, and run it yeah. by you. And, okay. and I would say yeah. on the second point also, uh, we've already discussed this internally in the committee that if the town gives us funding to go forward with the survey, then we certainly will be posting minutes. We've already, I think, made arrangements on the Cornwall Town site uh, to have a place to post those meeting minutes. 
So sure. we, we are working towards more openness. Yeah, I think that's very important, especially with any type of taxpayer funding. You know, mm -hmm. just people need to know exactly what's going on, um, at, both for the success of the committee and for, for our, our, our town as well. Um, and so in terms of the funding, I feel like we are leaning towards funding or offering funding for the Chronicle insert to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, if you guys are amenable to that, we can we can make a motion tonight. I don't know if you guys want to speak internally as a committee first. Um, um, I think, yeah, I think that, Marina, that's fine. Let me add some more thoughts um, and follow what Johan had said. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> um, we will be posting all of our minutes historically to date on the cornwallct.org website. Um, Richard Griggs is in, in contact with Laszlo and we're getting that ready once it's <clears throat> um, That is also where we intend to publish, <clears throat> sorry, the survey results. We also have um, a now working Gmail account, cornwallinternetcommittee.gmail.com. Um, um, anyone can send us information or questions at any time. Um, that is a way to communicate to us. Um, and the idea of doing the Chronicle insert is terrific. What I have seen in talking with other towns, uh, they have had to do mailing follow-ups. In fact, Sharon had to eventually do a second full mailing follow-up to the entire town to get what they have now, um, they've had about a 50% return rate. So we thought, as we talked it through, to do it concurrently so that we are hitting everyone you know, to be economically pragmatic, the Chronicle is a great place. We're going to have this survey online and hope most people will fill it out there. Um, if the Board of Selectmen would be willing to consider both, that's fine. If your feeling is towards one, um, we will manage. You know, um, we're, we're very concerned for the cost. Um, we're very concerned for the entire cost of this project and to have you know, between the 12 of us, we are focused on what we feel will be in the best interest for Cornwall, and it is for Cornwall to consider. Um, so I hope that addresses some of your... No, it does. And, and just out of clarity, you got a $500 estimate for an insert for the Chronicle? The Chronicle insert is going to be a four-page insert. Okay, understood. That's why, okay, yeah. Right. Understood. Yeah. Okay. Um, and do you have any more data in terms of what, so, so Sharon did, um, what they did a Chronicle insert and where else did they, no, no, Sharon, not a Chronicle insert. they did a mailing and then they did what else? Um, they did a mailing, they did emailing, mm -hmm. uh, there. Uh, yeah. Okay. Emailing and okay. Um, right. and their survey was written by Sharon residents for Sharon residents about Sharon um, the only um, misinformation that came out was it was also for region one families with school children, which I understand is actually a very small population of Cornwall. So it had been put out there that the Sharon survey is appropriate for Cornwall. It is not. Um, it wasn't written in that way. Um, okay, understood. I, um, I think what we... I, I think for the sake of efficiency and economy, I think I'd like to understand a little bit more about what do you think would be more effective in terms of the starting off point, a chronicle insert or the mailing? Because if we do a chronicle insert and then we don't think that's effective and we do a mailing, then we're, we're not being as prudent as we could, we could be. Um, and also to see the numbers sort of detailed would be helpful. Um, and back to public meetings, I, I do think, and. Jonathan, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you're a public meeting, you have to be able to be accessible to the public at the time of your meeting. So it's not just about posting minutes. Um, so that is something that maybe perhaps internally you guys need to discuss because um, it's not just putting minutes on the website afterwards, it's, it's being accessible to the public during your conversation. Um, so I don't know if you guys have discussed that. Uh, if, if that's what we need to do, we can do that. Okay, that will be what you would need to do to be a public meeting. So uh, accept, accepting $500 from the town of Cornwall does make us a public uh, a meeting. Johan, Johan, I would personally donate that $500 myself. Um, rather, you, would than, you mind? Rather, rather than have our meetings be open to the public. 
Um, can you guys speak on the side, please? This is not public comment right now. Thank you. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, Marina. It's okay. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Um, okay, so my point too, now that you guys know all this, I, I'm happy, you know, I think Priscilla would be happy for if you guys need to speak internally and come back to us, that's absolutely fine. Because we do support your initiatives, but but there are certain changes that will have to be made if um, if public funds are are given to this project. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I do want to be on record as supporting your work. I admire the work that this committee is doing. It is very detailed and most important to Cornwall. Thank you. Yes, I, I second that. I think it's really important and, and we appreciate it for sure. Um, so would you like to speak internally and get back to us? I think that would be yes. appropriate. That would okay. be thank well, you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Um, next on the agenda is vacancies. Um, so we have um, many vacancies coming up on various commissions. Um, Jonathan, we're going to table this for this meeting because Jonathan is actually going to reach out to um, some incumbents um, and see if they're, they want to um, give it another go. Um, we will send out this list um, in the Board of Selectmen newsletter and at Jonathan, maybe we can also post it on, I don't know if it already is on the um, cornwallct.org website. Um, but, you know, we're looking for volunteers um, and all of that will be publicized um, before our next meeting. So um, we'll table that for now. Um, next item is the election review. Um, so the uh, November 3rd election went really well at CCS. Um, we had a great voter turnout um, through mail-in voting, through um, the ballot drop-off and through in-person voting. Um, and we'd like to thank um, town clerk Vera Deneen, um, registrars of voters, Kara Weigold and Jane Ridgway, and all of the workers that were at the polls um, on November 3rd. Um, and we'd like to thank the school as well for um, letting us use the gym. Um, it all went really, really well. And I'm, I'm particularly proud of our voter turnout, um, which was quite high. I, I don't remember the exact number, but um, it was impressive. Um, Priscilla, do you have any thoughts on that? I'm always proud to be in Cornwall when it comes to voting day because we are always one of the highest turnouts in the state. And the school, this, what, everything you said, I, I echo because the school was a wonderful choice. The lines were virtually non-existent. It worked out beautifully. Thank you to everyone. Yes, thank you. Um, so the next item on the agenda is business illumination. Um, so we had spoken at our last meeting about West Cornwall, um, the EDC, the Economic Development <coughs> Commission um, is um, spearheading an initiative to light up West Cornwall for the holidays. Um, in addition to having uh, 12 windows um, to mimic the 12 days of Christmas to sort of be a little bit of a scavenger hunt for everybody. Um, and we just wanted to extend that to Cornwall Bridge as some of the businesses there are interested in participating and creating their own illumination set up for the holidays. So Jonathan, I think, is going to coordinate with the EDC to um, make sure that those businesses knows what's going on and uh, know what's going on and if they need any assistance in that. Um, so moving on to additions to the agenda. Um, we just wanted to let everyone know that the town hall players are having a virtual talent show the day after Thanksgiving to benefit the food and fuel fund. Um, I believe this is going to be run on the YouTube platform and is going to be um, posted to the cornwallct.org website. Um, I am not privy to the details on how um, this will, how, how you, if there's a donation or anything like that, but we will clarify that in the um, Selectman's newsletter that's going on, out on Thursday. Uh, Jonathan, do you have any idea about how that's going to work logistically? Well, I, I spoke with Fred Thaler today, um, who's uh, one of the town hall players. And it, it sounded like he's got the sign up stuff all set, like everybody's okay. participants are already involved it um so i don't know if it's still open for <clears throat> registration or not but to participate in it 
he he did confirm that uh, they were going to use this as a fundraising opportunity for the Food and Fuel Fund, um, okay. but I didn't get the details on how that was going to happen. But uh, okay, well we'll try to get that for everyone before um, the Selectman's newsletter goes out tomorrow. If you send that to me, I can make sure that it gets on the Coral Community Network and end the website. Okay, thank I'll you. I'll let you know. Okay, thanks. Yep. Um, another addi addition to the agenda is the town report will be finalized um, on Thursday. So everyone can pick up a copy of that at the various post offices. Um, Finance Director Barbara Hurst will be dropping it off most likely on Friday. Um, and we'll get that up on the CornwallCT.org website as soon as it's available. Um, next is uh, the town meeting. Um, due to the spikes in COVID cases um, and to the fact that we do not have anything pressing on our agenda for the town meeting, um, we have perhaps decided, depending on our vote tonight, to um, cancel it for the November 20th date that we have and move it to a date in the spring. Um, that also allows us time to research um, possible remote access meetings that um, some other towns have actually successfully done. Um, we didn't feel like we were prepared in terms of the options that we had seen um, as we were trying to plan this meeting. So seeing that really the only thing that um, needs to be done by July 21st is our uh, five-year capital budget, we feel like we can postpone this safely. It's not gonna deter any work for the town. Um, and I, I personally just don't feel comfortable gathering um, a large number of people in an enclosed space um, during this time. Um, Priscilla, do you have any thoughts on that? I agree with you. Um, and the fact that we only have one article to be decided by next July uh, underlines the fact that there's no immediate need for this November 20th meeting. So yeah. I, I would make the motion that we come up with the decision to postpone until late spring with that date to be developed by March. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Just two of us. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so lonely. Um, okay, so that comes to the end of all my business. Um, now we come back to public comment. Any public comment? Leela? Yes, sir. Thank you, Jonathan. Well, having a uh, questioning about the public uh, gatherings, I'm wondering uh, with the plans for the holiday lighting up of West Cornwall and the lighting of, of now uh, Cornwall Bridge, perhaps, um, what we'd like to know in the journal is whether the town is planning any gatherings for caroling or, or uh, cookie eating or cocoa sharing. <laughs> um, anything um, like that happening at the at the moment of the tree lighting? No, we are not. We are we are actually not having a tree lighting event. Um, so we are not encouraging crowds to gather. I okay. think the idea behind the um, illuminating the town centers and the twelve windows of Christmas was that this was something that you could do within your own family um, at your leisure um, to walk around the town at any day or time that you want. So there's no specific event which would create crowds. Right. Um, so we're being very cautious on that. That's a good idea. That's what I thought you'd say. So thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Um, okay, so the next is executive session. We um, are actually going to table this as well because we have no oh, new. Uh, yeah. Uh, Anna Tim Tamel had a public comment as well. Oh, sorry, we missed you, Anna. Go ahead. Well, I, I want to let everybody know that I can um, that there there is now ample evidence that all masks are not alike, and if you want to be absolutely safe. The best mask is the N95 mask, which very few people can get their hands on now. And the second best is the blue surgical mask, which is widely available. Um, cloth masks have become a fashion statement. They are not as effective unless you wear a surgical mask under them. And um, I have also seen people wearing some kind of face shield without a mask that's also ineffective. So I hope people in Cornwall 
pick the right mask to wear. That's all thank, I have to say. Thank you. That's um, very wise advice <laughs> and necessary right now. Um, we've we Joanne, I will allow, I will allow a comment even though we've sort of missed it. But go ahead. Joanne, are you there? You're muted. What? Yes, thank you. I'm there sorry. That's okay. Um, I was very disturbed by Dr. Mel's uh, comment that she would be willing to pay the $500, $500 so the committee uh, meetings would not be open and transparent. Uh, I don't think Cornwall should be in the business of allowing wealthy citizens to avoid the rules that uh, help to assure open and transparent town government. And I would specifically urge the Board of Selectmen to require the Internet Committee to uh, make their meetings uh, available and visible to the town via Zoom. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Um, okay, moving on to the last agenda item, the executive session, we are tabling this as we do not have any new information, so we do not have to discuss it. Um, and at that point, Priscilla, do you have anything else? Are you asking me to make a motion to adjourn? <laughs> if, you would, if you would like to, you may. <laughs> well, Anna had her hand up. Oh, sorry. I withdraw. Go ahead. Well, I wanted to respond to what Joanne is saying. Our committee uh, is actually now 13 members. We have worked very hard to develop a good working team. We are at very early stages of our discussions. And hmm. certainly when we get to the point of wanting to make a proposal to the town, we will be involving anyone who wants to have input. Uh, but it's, it's early days now, and we have had experience with an extremely disruptive individual who would no doubt return if we opened our meetings. We were unable to get any work done before this individual left our committee at our request. And uh, I, I know that we'll be paralyzed and we won't get anything done. We will... We all believe in democracy. We we'll believe in public input. There will come a point in time when we'll welcome it, but you're going to have to be patient. We have the best interests of Cornwall in mind. That's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. Um, hey, I'd just like to add to that. I'd like to, to add to that. Um, regarding this narrative that's been being promoted out to the public, it's a false narrative. Uh, Anna Tamel was referring to me here, and it just, I think it sort of really aligns well with uh, what I believe the name is jo Joanne said about the necess necessity of these meetings being public, because these meetings are being held in private, and there's certain, there are certain statements being made publicly, in, in, in particular, that were also made by the second selectman, uh, were in these this the statements that I had made regarding the Internet Expansion Committee and just generally about fiber optic. We were, don't have a second or third Slackman, so I don't know who you're referring okay, so to. Then it, would be, it wouldn't be you, Marina. It was Priscilla. Um, she she publicly stated, I, I was really astounded that she publicly stated that some statements I had made publicly about just the fiber optic anything anyway you can go back to the meeting to see what those statements were but those statements were substantiated she publicly stated that those statements were lies and 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 also gary at the same time gary steinkohl made some public def defamatory language at that meeting that was not stopped at the time by the board of selectmen i think that what is happening you can kind of see a taste of what's happening here in the fact that Anna Tamel would not like these meetings to be public and transparent and available to all. I think that if you did see these meetings, you would understand exactly how my statements fit in and exactly what is going on here with, it's not that 
it's not that I was disrupting meetings, it's that I was providing an alternative viewpoint that the committee did not want to hear, uh, in particular a viewpoint that stated that Optimum was bringing fiber optic to our region, which really would put the idea of a municipal fiber optic network in our community in jeopardy because we would be competing directly with that network. So I think this is chilling, not just for me personally, but for the town as a whole, because what's happening is that when people come before the committee to speak about an issue, I mean, before the Board of Selectmen, um, they have to be concerned that the Board of Selectmen itself will publicly libel you <laughs> in an attempt to silence your comments. And this is extremely disturbing to me as a resident in Cornwall. And I believe that there are many people in Cornwall who would be, uh, would not be aligned with this, this position that the Board of Selectmen has taken with regards to making a statement like that. I've asked the Board of Selectmen to correct that statement so as not to send that message publicly to the community. And it hasn't happened at this Caroline, point. Caroline, I'll have to interrupt you. A statement you from an individual that? And a statement from an individual board member is not a statement from the Board of Selectmen. I just want to clarify that. Um, sure, but, yeah, sure. But she was acting in her official capacity, stating that she was, uh, this was the view from the seat, a view from her. So she was acting as a Board of Selectmen member when she made that statement. I understand that you didn't make it, Marina, but it's, it's, it's well, a troubling, it's a troubling, um, it's a troubling, what do you call that? Uh, like, it's a troubling uh, habit or what, that's not the right word. It's, it's a troubling. Yeah, precedent to set exactly. Yes, I. Uh, so we. Uh, I think we've heard um, and and taken in everything. So I appreciate it. Thank you. For, thank you for listening, Marina. Yeah, no problem. Marina. Yes. You know, just to um, wrap this up, we are a committee of twelve Cornwallians who have dedicated ourselves to doing what's in the best interests of Cornwall. Um, we had a 13th member who was removed by the committee, um, and it's in the minutes. The minutes will um, be soon published. That will reflect her removal was inclusive of misinformation and fabrication of information. Um, this has been um, well established. So I encourage Cornwall and the Board of Selectmen to look to our committee to have the best interests of our town at its heart. Um, and. Um, be wary of um, uh, of this this campaign. Um, I encourage anyone, everyone, send information documented um, to our committee. We will consider it um, to take up the board of selectmen's time and our town's time um, in a misinformation <coughs> campaign is deeply, deeply disturbing. Um, and about as undemocratic as anything that can be. So um, that is my point. Okay, I think at this point, I, I think we've heard um, from everybody on this topic. I don't wanna get too much further in this in terms of personal issues with people, et cetera. So um, I, I, I would stress that I can speak for myself as a board member that I listen to uh, everybody. And I know that Priscilla and Gordon, um, by working with them, they do the same. I think um, there's a lot, there's still a lot to do. Um, there's still a lot to discover. So, um, I, you know, I, I'm positive going forward. And, um, you know, we didn't, we didn't vote on anything tonight. So I think we can all take a breather and, and we'll address this again. Any other public comment? Okay, Priscilla, you want to take it away? <laughs> what an invitation. <laughs> I would like to make a motion that we adjourn the selectmen's meeting this evening of Tuesday, November 17th. Okay, I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, thank you for everyone um, who participated and spoke, and to Priscilla and Jonathan, thank you. Have a great night. You too. Stay well. You too. Everybody, stay well. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.